Pushing off and jump magnification. In this video, we'll focus on the start of a jump, which is when a character is crouched and is pushing upward. At the start of a jump, the character is rising out of the crouch, pushing with the legs in order to get into the air. We'll call the distance over which the character pushes the push height, and the distance from takeoff to apex the jump height. Similarly, the time from crouch to takeoff we'll call the push time, and from takeoff to apex we'll call the jump time. The ratio of the jump to push heights is the jump magnification. That is, the jump magnification equals the jump height from takeoff to apex divided by the push height from crouch to takeoff. For example, if the character rises from a one foot crouch and jumps four feet into the air, then the jump magnification is four. What we, what we would like to know is the timing of the push. That is, how many frames is it from when the character starts rising until they take off from the ground? As I said, we'll call this the push time. We can find it as follows. The push time from crouch to takeoff equals the jump time from takeoff to apex divided by the jump magnification. Let's go through an example. Suppose that the push height is 10 inches and the jump height is 20 inches. Since 20 divided by 10 is 2, this means that the jump magnification is 2. The jump time is 8 frames, so the push time is 8 divided by 2, which is 4 frames. Animators can plan out a realistic jump by following these five steps, which I'll now explain in detail. Let's go through them one by one. Step one, pick the height of the jump or the time of the jump. Here, we've picked a jump height of four feet. Step two, use this table to find the matching jump height and jump time. In this example, the jump height is four feet, so the jump time is 12 frames. Step three, put the character in the crouch pose and determine the push height. In this example, the character's center of gravity rises one foot from the crouch pose to the takeoff pose. Step four, find the jump magnification. In this example, the jump height is four feet and the push height is one foot, so the jump magnification is four. This is an unusually high jump for an ordinary human, but it's physically possible. Finally, in step five, determine the push time by dividing the jump time by the jump magnification. In our example, this is 12 frames divided by four, which is three frames. Here's an example of a simple jump. In this example, the jump magnification equals one since the push height, crouch to takeoff, equals the jump height, takeoff to apex. That means that the push time, number of frames from crouch to takeoff, equals the jump time, number of frames from takeoff to apex. Notice that the jump time is actually a little short given the height of the jump, 
Nevertheless, the jump is believable because the timing is consistent with the jump magnification. To get a believable jump, it's important to keep the jump time and the push time consistent. If the jump time is reduced to make the action snappy, then cut the push time by the same fraction. As a final check, make sure that the jump time divided by the push time equals the jump height divided by the push height. The idea is that for these three key poses, crouch, takeoff, and apex, the timing and spacing needs to be consistent. This doesn't have to be perfect, but if the two ratios are very different, then the jump will probably look wrong. So in summary, the push height is the distance the center of gravity rises from crouch to takeoff. Jump magnification is the jump height divided by the push height. Push time, crouch to takeoff, is jump time divided by jump magnification. You can plan out the timing for a realistic jump by following the five steps that I showed you. If the jump time is reduced to make the action snappy, then you should adjust the push time as well. And finally, for the three key poses, crouch, takeoff, and apex, the ratios of the times and heights need to be consistent for a jump to look believable. If you're feeling overwhelmed by all that information, don't worry. Once you use these concepts, you'll find that they're actually easier to use than they are to explain.